nothing like your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. With lifted hands. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing like the presence, like the presence of the Lord. Nothing like your presence. As we seek his face, he is here. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. Can we say that again? There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. Nothing like the presence of the Lord. We seek his face. He is here. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. Healing in the presence. Oh, healing in the presence. We seek his face. He is here. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. Nothing like the presence, like the presence of the Lord. Nothing like the presence. Hey, as we seek his face, he is here. There is nothing like. One more time. Nothing like the presence. Nothing like the presence. As we seek his face, he is here. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. Nothing like, nothing like. Oh, there's healing in your presence, Lord. There is nothing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I, I didn't give my testimony, and this is, I never really tes testify, but when she mentioned the word maintain and sustain, through this whole COVID situation, they said, you're going to work three days every two weeks. And I have some big boys that can eat. I have bills like everyone else. And I was like, well, thank you, Lord. At least I'm getting three days. But the catch was, they said, you're working three days, but you're getting paid for 14. In the middle of a pandemic, God still provides. 
I didn't miss one meal. Didn't miss one bill. What an awesome God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. Three days. You think three days is a coincidence? Three days I worked and got paid for 14. Who does that? Who does that? <laughs> Whoa, Jesus. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Think about that. Jesus. I just, I just really thought about that. Like, who, who does that? <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel it. I feel it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I'm just. It just really hit me that He provided just like he did for all those people in, in, in the Bible. Miracles still happen. God is still on the throne. He's still working it out. In the midst of a storm, in the midst of a pandemic, when you're supposed to go down, God was bringing me up. Hallelujah. I was allowed to pay off some things. I was allowed to buy some things, all for the glory of God. What an awesome God we serve. Give the Lord a hand, praise. Can you say, I'm all in? <laughs> Don't just say it, do you mean it? I'm all in. Thank you, Lord. What an awesome God. Would you stand to your feet? Our pastor always teases us saying we don't give him enough time to preach. So if we're running low over, it's our fault. <laughs> but I'm giving you plenty of time. <laughs> because we need the word. We need to hear from God. We need to hear his direction. So put your hands together and welcome the Better Way Apostolic Church pastor our very own, Dr. Harold Durham. Receive him with praise the Lord. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. Smiled on me, has yes, set me free. God has smiled on me, has been good to me. Anybody have that testimony this morning? Uh, there's another verse that says something about he, he, he woke me up. Mm. And, and yeah, and, and started me on my way. I, I, anybody got their testimony this morning? I, I, I used to lead the singing to y'all, but I just felt a little something, something this morning. A he, 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 he man in the. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's going to come back or not, but 
with all this time, I, I, I may have enough time to sing another song in there somewhere. Amen. All to the glory of God. Amen. We, we give honor to the awesome God that we serve. Amen. And I, I, I'm glad I know him by his name. Uh, look at your neighbor and tell him his name is Jesus. In a world that is confused, I'm glad I know him by his name. Amen. We, we give honor to the very fine and distinguishing First Lady, uh, Dr. Shirley Durham, uh, to all of our first time visitors uh, that are here with us this morning. Uh, we're, we're so happy to have each of you that are here with us. Amen. And to the Betterway family uh, that just keeps on uh, doing great things in God. We are grateful for the privilege and the honor uh, to be your pastor. I want to ask you to turn with us uh, to the book of 2 Corinthians. Now, there's a word for somebody today because I wanted to preach something else, but uh, uh, preachers understand this. You, you, got it, you think all together and, and then God come in and change it. Amen. I, I, I wanted to preach about a delayed victory uh, this morning, but the Lord said, that's not the message, son. Uh, I, I said, and, and, and I tried to go back to it, and he said, that's not the message. And, and, and so this morning, I, I asked you to turn with us to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 20. Look at your neighbor and say, this is for you. Y'all don't sound too encouraging. Come on, look at your other neighbor and say, this is for you. Amen. For all the promises of God in him are yea. And in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. I, I simply want to talk to you from the subject when negative brings positive. When negative brings positive. Uh, Father, we bless and we thank you uh, this morning for your goodness and your mercy, your grace and your truth. Those, Lord, that are watching the telecast, we ask you, Lord, to touch them. Those that are on their beds of afflictions, we ask you, Lord, to strengthen, heal, and deliver. Set free, O oh God, those that are battling in their addictions. Lord, whether the addiction is sin, or Lord, whether it's alcohol or drugs, we know, God, that you're able to do anything but fail. And so, God, we bring it all to you even now. We pray, God, that as your word goes forth, that it goes forth with clarity and with understanding. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. When negative brings positive. I don't think that we have to go very far uh, to understand uh, what God is trying to tell us in the text today about negativity and how through God it brings positivity. Deacon Wortham confirmed in his testimony how working three days but getting paid for 14 days. And, 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 you know, I, I believe that there, there's others that could testify as well that, that what the enemy meant for bad, God meant for good. 
And as we look at our text and examine uh, the chronological history of the Apostle Paul, he had made a promise in our text that he was going uh, to spend some time with the Corinthian church. Uh, it was some years ago that uh, Deacon Kirby helped me to understand my position better as a pastor uh, because I'm goal-oriented. And the saints were stopping by and just wanting to hang out and be with the pastor. And, and I said to uh, Deacon Kirby, I says, look, man, I got work to do around here. You know, he said, well, pastor, you don't understand. It's a privilege and an honor to be able to share with the pastor. And I said, oh. <laughs> and, and, and so in our text, the Corinthian church was excited because Paul the apostle who had set it up was coming to spend some time with them. But now Paul wasn't just sitting around twiddling his thumbs and watching the latest and greatest movie or show. Paul was always busy working in the vineyard trying to get the message of Jesus Christ across to whoever would give him an audience. And, and, and because he had a zeal and a passion for God, the Bible says that something came up. Anybody ever been in that position that you made a promise to somebody and something came up? Well, you, you, you know, uh, most of them understood that Paul had a love and a concern for this Corinthian church, but then there were some that were just waiting for an opportunity to try to discredit him as the man of God, as the apostle, because we see throughout all of Paul's writings, he, he is constantly defending his position as the apostle. And, and, and some of that was some guilt that some would not let go of because Paul, before he was converted, uh, he persecuted the church. And they were quick to remind them. And you know, you got some church folks like that. Shh, don't, don't tell nobody. But you, you know, we, we got some church folks like that. They'll never let you live down the mistakes of your past. But, but in this case, Paul had did no sinful thing. He, he, he just couldn't keep the commitment that he made to them, uh, and it wasn't like he didn't uh, tell them ahead of time. But they took this opportunity to try to discredit him, uh, first of all, as a man of God. Second, as an apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, third, that the gospel that he was preaching and teaching, it, it was of no real, uh, had no real truth to it. Uh, and out of this, Paul uh, was very hurt because he thought everybody in the church loved him. It, 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 man, it, 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 and so as a result of this very simple incident, then there was a subliminal truth, man, that, that they were trying to proclaim that Paul was not a man of his word. It was also an instance to, to, to refer in this chapter that the Corinthians, they had misrepresented the apostle Paul because what they were describing was not the character of Paul. Have somebody ever lied on you? You, you, you can go ahead and, you know, just, just make like you had an, had an ox and just nod your head. Don't nobody have to know. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about folks in the world either. I'm talking about folks in the church. He said, what? That's why the Bible says, uh, lie not. Uh, uh, that's why the Bible says, steal not. It says, 
if you stole, they say, steal no more. Amen. But, but not only did they misrepresent Paul, but they spoke ill of him. Amen. And now Paul, out of his kindness, he wanted to ignore these untrue claims about him Amen. and say nothing about it. And, you know, sometimes we think that we're doing the right thing by not saying anything, but this is where the positive amen came out of something negative. Amen. Because if they had not lied on Paul, uh, then Paul would not have penned, uh, amen, this verse, uh, amen, that gives encouragement to all of us. That the promises of God uh, are yea and amen. Uh, now, when we examine the promises of God, uh, can I tell you from uh, the very outset, uh, before God even uh, amen, spoke the heavens uh, into existence, um, the, his word was uh, already established. Uh, amen. Before amen, man was ever a fault, uh, uh, amen. His word uh, was already established because uh, it represented his character. Uh, amen. And, and so Paul says, I'm not going to deal with it, uh, but, but, but under the guidance of the Holy Ghost. Uh, he was led to act otherwise uh, because sometimes we try to leave things alone, but then sometimes the Holy Ghost said, no, you need to deal with this. Uh, and, and, and so Paul goes in and, and uh, you know, Paul, Paul wasn't no jelly back. Amen. He, 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 he wasn't a timid man. Uh, he could stand with the best of them. Uh, amen. But under the guidance of the Holy Ghost, uh, he knew what fights uh, that he needed to fight. Uh, and, and Paul didn't feel like this was one because folks had lied on him before. Uh, he said it's no big thing, but God says no. Uh, Paul, this one uh, you've got to address. Uh, you've got to address this one because uh, there's a word, uh, amen, that the church needs to know. Uh, that in spite of everything that's going on, uh, amen, uh, they need to know that my promises uh, are rock solid. Uh, uh, if I said it, I'm, uh, I'm going to do it. Uh, and so I don't know what your negative situation is today, amen, but I believe God uh, sent me by to remind you uh, that if, if he said it in his word, uh, all you got to do is learn uh, how to stand on it. Uh, when the pandemic began uh, in, in the month of March uh, and we closed the doors uh, and was doing online only, it was the time when the bank came back uh, and said, we, we want to do an update on uh, your finances. Uh, we want to know how your attendance is looking. Uh, amen. Because uh, we're, we're ready to loan you the money. Uh, well, uh, no church didn't know how it was going to all work out. Uh, well, where, where's Brother Lowe? Yeah, because he said, but God. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. And, and, and so I, I, I began to get the numbers together, uh, amen, the numbers were raging, uh, amen, with the audience uh, on Facebook and, uh, amen, and the other social medias, and we began to track that and, and uh, put it in a, a format, and, and, and then we, we, we began to show that the offerings didn't drop, uh, but they went up, um, uh, look at your neighbor and say, but God, uh, amen, and, 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 and so the bank says, um, the you know, there's something different um, about your church uh, because everybody else's, uh, their numbers are going down. Uh, but look at your neighbor, uh, amen, and just remind them uh, that, that, that God will take what appears uh, to be negative uh, to show you something positive. But, uh, and, and so somebody may have gotten bad news. Uh, some have been laid off. Um, uh, but I heard one brother say, uh, I've been laid off, uh, but I'm getting getting 80% of my pay, uh, and then I'm getting unemployment. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, but God. Uh, 
Amen. And, and, and I said to somebody that God is doing for better way uh, what they're doing in the Bible. Uh, amen. Uh, we're just not reading about it, uh, but we're living proof uh, that the promises of God uh, are yea and amen. Uh, I need to tell somebody, amen, today uh, that it's not time, uh, amen, to throw in the towel. Um, uh, it's not time to give up. Um, uh, amen. Even though it may look negative, uh, you got to hang on uh, to the promises of God. Uh, because if you hold on uh, to the promises of God, uh, God will see you through. The, uh, I, I'm reminded that there's a business, uh, amen, close to our house. It's a barbecue establishment. Uh, and the Lord spoke a word to the first lady uh, and, and, and told her to go and tell them uh, not to close the doors. Um, uh, and you know, because uh, business uh, wasn't looking good. Um, uh, amen. But how many know that when God says a thing, God uh, has got to come to pass? Uh, Amen. And, and Sister Durham went in and, 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 and said, can I speak to your mother, amen, and your father, amen. And she said that God told me to tell you, amen, that uh, don't close the doors. Uh, he said, and she said that you said, uh, amen, we don't have the money. She said, but God said, uh, you didn't have the money when you opened up. Uh, he said, I've been keeping you uh, all the time. Uh, oh, I need somebody to recognize that. Uh, that is God uh, that's been keeping you. Uh, it's not you uh, that's keeping you, uh, but it's God that's keeping you. Uh, well, we went back in there. I'm almost like a celebrity now. I'm not, when I go in there because of First Lady, how you doing, Pastor? I said, Hallelujah. They, they, they slipped me a big piece of cake. I didn't turn that one down. I said, Lord, have mercy. Pastor, this is for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then they had a sign out now hiring because the business is so good. Uh, see, see, God just wants us to learn uh, how to trust him uh, in our negative situations. Uh, it's not time to start whining and complaining, uh, talking about why me. God's trying to show you the positive uh, in the midst of your negative situation. Amen. And so the Bible says that, amen, Paul said, I don't have to defend my character, but God says you do. And the reason why you do, because you represent me. Amen. And so, you know, we might have never, amen, had these precious verses if Paul had not been so ill-treated, amen, by these men at Corinth. And so I want to tell you today the things that God allows you to go through. The, it, it, it is to bring out the greatness and the goodness and the revelation of God uh, so that you can in turn uh, be a blessing uh, to somebody else. Uh, you see, they, they did him wrong uh, greatly. Not, not, not just a minor thing, but they assassinated his character and, and they caused him much heart, uh, amen, much uh, sorrow of heart, uh, amen, for, for a man, uh, amen, who was so sincere and upright, amen, they, it vexed him sorely because he said, I would never intentionally do anything uh, to hurt you. But how many know that God knows where your heart is? Amen. And, and, and you know, I, I need to remind you that when, when there's a calling on your life, you, you know, Paul had to go through these things. Uh, now, Paul had a great anointing. Paul was used mightily of God, uh, but the more God reveals to you, look at your neighbor and say, uh-oh. The more he reveals to you, uh, the more affliction he has to put on you. You say, what? Well, well, Pastor, why does he have to do that? Because he has to keep you humble. Paul, a, 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 a man, a, a experienced things that should not be, should not have been seen by men, uh, should not have even been uttered. A, a man, a, a, and so the thorns in his flesh 
was to keep him humble because God can't use you if you're not humble. You can be gifted and talented, but, but God can't use you until you're humble. And, and, and so it was in this humbling experience that God gave him these words to pen. He man that 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 while they are misrepresenting you, Paul says, for all of the promises of God in Christ are yea and amen unto the glory of God by us. You see, there are many things which at first we may regret, but if we stay with God, God says that I'm going to turn that bad into good. Now, now you, 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 you know, after it's all over with, then we become eternally grateful. We never know why God's doing what he's doing, but some things w will not come out in the comfort zone. <laughs> some things will not come out in the fear zone. It, it, it is only when God begins to stretch us, amen, that God can pour or pull out of what's already in us. Because if the Spirit of God rests in you, there's greatness already in you. But, but it's, the, it's the pressure that forces it out. E e e man, you, you, you know now, Paul was not the only one that was insulted. E e e e e man, but, 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 but now, Jesus was attacked cruelly, amen, by the scribes and the Pharisees. Now, if Jesus had not been attacked by the scribes and the Pharisees, amen, we may have never heard about those three parables, uh, about the lost sheep, amen, the lost silver, amen, and the lost son, uh, amen, but it was because of their hardness of heart uh, that they said these things, but out of that, uh, there were treasures, uh, amen, for us, uh, uh, amen, with uh, 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 amen, uh, the lost sheep, the value that you have with God. Uh, because God is not counting numbers. Uh, God is more concerned about your heart. Uh, amen, about the lost silver. Uh, amen, uh, this one piece that she tore the house upside down for. Uh, amen, because it had value to her. Well, can I tell you, you have to have determination and perseverance. Uh, if you're going to make it, not only in this life, but with God. Uh, he, he, man, and, and then the lost son. Uh, now, now, he said he wasn't going to do right, uh, but, but, but after he went through all that he went through, uh, all, you know, he had all this money, and he thought he had friends, but really his friends had money. Because when his money ran out, those friends were no longer there because they was friends to his money. Look at your name and say, don't let folks use you. Mm -hmm. but, but you, you know, some folks, they just want to be accepted by everybody. E -e -e Amen. But I want to be accepted by the Lord. And being accepted by the Lord means that sometime other folks are not going to like me. Yeah? Amen. And the reason why they're not going to like me because if I'm living, amen, if I'm practicing uh, what I'm reading, because there's some folks that can quote the Bible, but they don't live a nickel's worth of nothing. Uh, well, your knowledge, uh, amen, without practicality, without living the life, uh, it has no value. Uh, now, the fact that that Paul had intended, uh, amen, to visit the Christians at Corinth uh, again, uh, but he felt compelled, uh, amen, to alter his decision uh, because God knew that something needed to come out. Uh, oftentimes we make plans, but God alters the plan uh, because God already sees what's ahead. If, if, if it was up to me, we, 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 we would have been celebrating, uh, a, a man, 10 years over there on the property. But, but God had to do it his way. Be, 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 because 
If I'd have done it my way, you know, I, I, I could have said, well, you know, I got this degree in business. And, and, but, but, but see, when God does it, he makes sure that nobody gets the glory but him. It meant those that have been with the ministry knew that, that we, we, we had a letter of approval from the bank. We had money in the bank. We were getting ready to buy another church. And guess what? They, they, they decided they didn't want to sell. I said, what? Who does that? Then we had another bank come here and Sister Durham and I think the deacons, we all sitting around all anxious and excited and they said, yeah, we're going to do the loan for you. A after all of that, then they decided, no, we're not going to do it. Door after door after door after door after door kept closing. E e e man, but like the lost piece of silver, we kept pushing because God made a promise to us. And, and that's what Paul was trying to get this Corinthian church, he, 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 he man, to understand that if God makes a promise, is yea and amen. If, if God tells you he's going to do something, you now he doesn't give you a timeline, but if he says he's going to do it, uh, look at your neighbor and say, he's going to do it. He, 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 man, he, he, and so while all of this was going on, uh, Paul, he, 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 man, was in his right authority to rebuke them for what was going on. But Paul tried to take the low road. Uh, but, but God said, sometime uh, you're not helping people uh, when you turn your head. Uh, he said, some things have to be confronted. Uh, because if you don't get on the right road, uh, you'll end up he, he, man, in a place uh, where you don't want to go. Uh, and, and God said, because I love you. He said, because those that I love, I chasten. Uh, those that I love, I correct. Uh, you ought to be glad, uh, amen, that God uh, is on your tail. Mm -hmm. You ought to be glad that God won't let you sleep. <laughs> you know why he said? Because I, I, I love you too much. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Uh, uh, he, he man to see you go down the wrong road. Uh, he said you cost too much. It, it, it doesn't matter what the struggle is. Uh, God says that I can take that negative and turn it into something positive. But uh, man, you know it, it's amazing that a car won't start. Uh, amen. Unless you have the negative and the positive both hooked up on the car. Uh, well, can, can't you see God? Uh, he said I got to take this negative. Uh, amen. To charge up what's going to come out of you. Uh, it, it's like that old olive. Uh, amen. Uh, the olive is pretty and green on the outside got the little red part in the middle amen but you know what the value is it's when you crush the olive uh, the oil has the value uh, and, and so God says sometime I've got to crush you uh, amen I, I, I've got to crush you so what's in you can come out uh, amen now I, I know it's hard to believe uh, 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 brother Kim I, I know it's hard to believe amen but 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 the pastor used to be shy uh, amen the teacher used to beg me to say something in class I, I, but I shine no more. Hallelujah. Amen. But, but I had to go through some things. Amen. I had to be rejected and talked about. Discredited. Amen. But, but I held on to God. Amen. And that's what I need somebody to know today that you got to hold on to God that in spite amen, of what people are saying or doing and trying to sway you but what God has delivered you from Paul says you can't turn back amen. and so the first thing that, that we notice in the text amen, is the dignity of the promises uh, now, 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 now Paul says for the promises of God uh, are yea and amen and now these promises were all made according to the purpose of God's own will not Paul, but God says that I already know how I want you to be. And as I was talking with someone this week, they kept saying, I'm waiting on God. I says, uh, can, can, can I turn that around? 
and, and, and ask you uh, that, that maybe God's waiting unto you? Uh, because sometimes when we don't want to do something, uh, we hide behind, uh, I'm waiting on God. Uh, but see, God uh, never has a problem in answering us. Uh, God never has a problem in giving us direction. Uh, and, and so while many times we're saying we're waiting on God, uh, can I tell you it's actually the other way around. God's uh, waiting on you. He has equipped you. He's given you everything thing that you needed, amen, but you, you just keep on saying, well, you know, uh, I, I'm just not ready, you know, it's not time. Well, can I tell you that, that sometimes we, uh, we, we read or we hear or, or we speak the promises written of God's word, but we do not give them much credit. Amen. We give the word of somebody else more credit than the word of God. Uh, if God told you, amen, he was going to bless you, it doesn't matter what the naysayers say, amen, because God can take that negative situation uh, and turn it into something positive. Uh, e e man, and so we've got to get to the point e e man, that we have tunnel vision when it comes to God. Uh, now, if God opens the door, and, uh, you know, you may not know everything you need to know, but when you start to walk through the door, you know what? God will give you some folks to help you on the journey. But, but, but God is just saying today, get started. Get out of the woulda, coulda, shoulda ministry. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to do it in five years. Now is the time. Let, let, let me show you how awesome God is. That there is so much money available for startup businesses now because of COVID-19. And we sitting around, I'm just waiting on the Lord. The Lord has opened the door. You know what he's saying? Walk in it. He's opened the door and, and, and we just still... Well, you know, ain't, ain't nobody else moving. Well, maybe because it's not their season. It, it, it's your season. Now, now, you, you know, I, I, I've told you before in the book of Ecclesiastics that there are 28 seasons in our lives, man, that, that we go through. Man, and I don't know what season you're in, but... I believe that if you're in a negative season, that God's going to turn it into a positive. Uh, amen. But, but, but what God can't stand is whiny, wimpy folks it's talking about woe is me. Uh-oh. Somebody say, help me, Lord Jesus. Amen. You, 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 you got to be like Job. Say, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Job kept on moving. Joseph, when he was, he, 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 man, thrown in the pit, he, 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 man, he still kept a positive attitude. Uh, he, man, when he was falsely accused and thrown in the prison, uh, he kept a positive attitude. Uh, he, man, it was negative, but oh, guess what? Uh, he, man, he finally, he, man, made it to the palace. He, he, man, and, and, but he had to go through all of that negative and, and then those old conniving brothers of his said, dad is dead now. He is surely going to take us out. He, he said that I'm standing in the stead of God. Huh. He, he, he said what you meant for bad, he said God meant for good. And so God opened up the door, amen, to sustain his whole family. Matter of fact, the whole nation and then other people had to come to them. Uh, Sometimes when I'm talking to some of my pastor friends, I, I said, I'm Joseph and we've got the corn here at Better Way. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because God knew long before, amen, the, 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 the testing center and the counseling center was established, God knew that COVID-19 was coming. Amen. And, and, and while uh, there's not a lot of people that can gather together in, in the sanctuary because of the social distancing, there's enough to keep us motivated. 
out, uh, but, but, but yet we're still reaching out and making a difference in our community, amen, because uh, before COVID-19, two days a week, we, we, we were doing uh, GED tutoring here. Now it's virtual, amen, but people are still coming. They're taking tests. They're, they're taking IT tests. They're, they're taking teacher's exams. Uh, they're, they're taking security tests. And, and the list just goes on and on. O over 300 and something different tests and certification. That was God's doing. Because the church should lead and not follow. We shouldn't be running after the world saying what we're going to do. The church ought to have the plan uh, to let the world know, uh, e e man, this is how it's going to be. E e e man, we should not be panicking. What I know about God, if God closes one door, somebody say, help me, Lord Jesus. It just means he's getting ready. Oh, hallelujah. He's getting ready to open a bigger door for you. And while you whining about what you lost, God said, I got something better. Uh, when, when, when Paul got through explaining about the promises of God, or yea and amen, uh, it, it, it simply means that it's going to be his truth. If God said it, guess what? It's going to happen. Uh, amen. If you meet the condition. Now, now you, you, you can't live like a, a, a man, a sinner, and expect to get a saint's blessing. Uh-oh, I, I need a little music that got quiet on me there. A, 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 let me say that again. You, you can't live like a sinner and think, you, think you're going to get a saint's blessing. God, because all of God's promises are conditional. And, 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 and you know, sometimes we take uh, the promises of God and we try to twist them to fit our situation. But, but, but see, that's not how it works. <laughs> Man, every promise is to bring God glory. <laughs> Man, it, it, it's for his own pleasure. Man, we benefit when we yield to God. Man, if, if your life is tore up from the floor up, Man, I, 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 I want to tell you that God wants to give you a new thought. God, God knew from the beginning, he, 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 man, that men's wisdom would perish because it's not tested and it's not proven, but the word of God is tested and proven. He, he, man, God is repeating what you have read in your Bible. He's now doing it in your life. Oh, are there any witnesses? Uh, he, 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 man, because it, it, it doesn't make sense to get paid for 14 days and only work three. Uh, I, I think it was the clock that said God did it. <laughs> he, 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 man, uh, and, and, and so God is doing some amazing things. He, he, man, this is the time for you to stand firm and flat-footed on the promises of God. And if you stand firm and flat footed on uh, the, the promises of God. God, God says, it's not in my character not to take care of that that belongs to me. He, 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 man, and, and so Paul, as he was yet again uh, explaining uh, that the promises of God, uh, he, 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 man, he says, when you can see the promises of God, it shows that you're growing in your personal growth with God. Amen. Because in order to grow in God, uh, you've got to stretch. You know, some of us like to stay in that same place. You know, you, you, you know we, we don't want to do nothing extra. You know, we, we don't want to be out of our comfort zone, but you cannot be blessed by God unless you're willing to be stretched. And so when Paul was uh, giving instructions and, and reminding them, because the Corinthian church was a very talented church. They had all the gifts in operation in the church. That, you, you know, that, that, that not only did they have the talents, they had money. And, and see, Paul was supposed to come early and collect their money 
to take to the Jerusalem church because they were doing a little struggling. And, and they said, this is the least that we could do. You, you know, look here, we're running over. We got it good. And, but, but see, God knew where their heart was. And, and so they, they, they had to be a little chastisement first. You know, because we should give as unto the Lord. And, and, and so Paul had to come in again. You, you know, Paul wrote two letters to this church and a lot of chapters because they had a lot of problems. You, you know, when, when the gifts are in operations, uh, some, some, sometimes there's a spirit of competition. And a true servant of God does not work in competition. Because we know we are who we are and what we are because of God. And, and, and so Paul says, I'm, Paul says, I'm the least among the brethren. Well, well, you know, Paul had to be very humble to have written over half of the New Testament, to speak seven languages fluently. He, he, he could articulate. He, he, he man had all of these encounters with God. But the thorn helped to keep him humble. The best way to do it is to stay humble yourself and not let God have to help you to get humble because now he can help you, but I, 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 I'd just rather do it on my own. He, he, he mad. And, 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 and so uh, Paul talked about everything that God does is, is for his purpose. Everything that God gives us, it's to bring him glory. Amen. And, and, and so today, as we prepare to close, I, I, I want to remind you, amen, that if God is for you, then he's more than the opposition that is against you. That we got to learn how to hold on to the promises of God because the promises of God are sure. And, and you know, uh, oftentimes we're so busy trying to stay in the same place. E e amen. But every day the clock resets. Hmm. You, you, your wins don't matter and your failures don't matter. So don't stress over what was, fight for what could be. Before I retired from UPS, some days we would have a stellar day, production was extremely high, very few misloads. And, and, and then uh, af after the celebration, when you come in the next day, they said, that was yesterday. What did you do today? Well, that's the way we have to look at our life. We cannot continue to walk in failure, defeat in failure. What happened yesterday is under the blood. It's a new day and a new opportunity for Jesus to take you a little higher. Now today, if you don't have that personal relationship with God, if, if there's a question mark in your mind, if I was to die today, would heaven be my home? God doesn't want us to live in doubt, but he wants us to walk in certainty that our relationship with him is solid. Because we are all a work in progress, but we've got to get connected to the true vine. The two roads. And the question is, which road will you take? One road leads to eternal life, and the other, eternal damnation. If I was you, and I wasn't certain, like Nicodemus when he said, what do 
I have to do to be born again? Well, it's your opportunity. It's your opportunity to get clarity because what we have in this life is soon going to be gone. And only what we have in God will remain. And, and so today, if that's you, rather you're watching the telecast or you're here, you can have that assurance. The Bible tells us that a man must repent of his sins, be baptized in water for the remission of your sins, and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. When a man or woman repents, it means that you turn away, you stop doing what you were doing. But you need the Holy Ghost to lead you and guide you as it did Paul in the text. Because the Bible says that the Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you into all truth. Truth brings deliverance. Many of us, before we came to God, we thought we were really living the life. The psychedelic lights, the black lights, the spirits. You, you know what I'm talking about. Those, those little small cigarettes uh, before they elevated them to a higher level. Uh, uh, you, you know, we, we, we thought we were really living only to find out that that's not the way God intended for it to be. God has a better way for you. And so I, I, I invite you to call us or come be with us in one of our services. Someone will be glad to instruct you and pray with you and guide you through the word of God. We hope and trust that you have been uh, blessed by God's word on today. Uh, all of the contact information, if you want to share with this ministry uh, in, in your giving, is at the bottom of the screen. God bless you today is our prayer. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody, and put your hands together. Amen. And... Give God a praise. Amen.